Aloha Kako and welcome to Ola Kahaloa, presented by the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I'm Mihana Okala Hind, the Director of Community Engagement, and I am here to guide you along our journey as we take a look at issues relevant to our Native Hawaiian community. The Office of Hawaiian Affairs was established by the State Constitutional Convention in 1978 with the mandate to better the conditions of Native Hawaiians. We fulfill that mandate through advocacy, research, community engagement, land management, and the funding of community programs. The goal of this program is to take a deeper look at our Hawaiian communities and how we are voyaging through the ever-changing world around us. Native Hawaiians continue to navigate through the currents and the swells, the high and low tides, and the clear and stormy days. But we now have an expanded set of tools to guide us through this journey. Our traditions are able to complement new technologies to answer both new and old questions facing our society. Our people are also finding innovative ways to envision a lahui for our yet to be born mo'opuna that builds on the values of our long past kupuna. These are the inspiring stories we hope to tell as we move forward, we also look back to our ancestors and the history of our people to gather strength and wisdom as one lahui. We are honored to have you as our guests. Welcome to Olakahaloa. The Board of Trustees recently made a decision to add more than $3 million to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs response to the COVID-19 crisis that we are all experiencing. Today we are joined by Oha Kpohana and CEO, Dr. Sylvia Hussey. Aloha mai kako. Um, today, as Mehana has said, um, in addition to the technical, I believe this was the first time that the Board of Trustees conducted a meeting um, utilizing technology because of the current situation and so that also made this uh, meeting. That was quite historic, that was. Uh, it was interesting watching it, yeah. So in addition to the technology and the first of uh, the meeting format, uh, the $3 million was really a commitment to two strands of efforts to address COVID-19. The first strand, almost $2.1, million dollars goes to ad adding to the emergency financial assistance program or the kahiao program that is a program funded by oha as well as state general funds and is administered by the council for native hawaiian advancement that program is really important because it was the first line of support for our families for rent mortgage rent deposits as well as utilities and so in those early days and these first few days in terms of stabilizing our families and communities, the Emergency Financial Assistance Fund was critical to being able to provide support and funding for our families. Uh, we also made program adjustments to ensure that the program recipients, our beneficiaries, could all benefit from the funds that were there as well. So, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs has made programmatic changes to be able to address the needs of our communities. The other portion of the dollars has gone to the Hawaii Community Foundation and the various Island Strong Funds. And those particular funds are focused on organizations in communities for community-based food security. And what that means is we were looking for grantees and community members Native Hawaiian owned businesses, farmers, ranchers, uh, gatherers, uh, hunters, those who are subsistence living, who are helping to perpetuate food security in their communities. And as we know, each island is very different. How Molokai right. addresses food security is different than Kau or is different than Kauai or any other part of our island. So it was really important to be able to donor direct those dollars through the Hawaii Community Foundation uh, Island Strong Funds to allow communities to be able to shape what food security looks like um, in, their, in their community. The funds were also very targeted to, these are farmers who are uh, kalo farmers, my, uh, 
Uwala, these are also sustaining practices in our communities. And so we're very pleased that $830,000 of funding is going to be able to support our farmers in and hunters and communities to be able to address food security and more importantly to establish practices and perpetuate practices that are in the community that are sustainable and Aina based. So we're very pleased at the trustees decision to be able to address COVID-19 in emergency immediate ways as well as in Aina based sustainability and cultural based ways. Thank you so much, Pohana, for joining us um, today. Uh, now we're going to go to Sterling Wong, who is, is with Chair Machado at this time to get some feedback from the Board of Trustees. Mahalo. Aloha mai kako. Uh, we are here with uh, OHA Trustee Colette Machado, representing the islands of Moloka'i and Lanai. She is our Board Chair. Chair, you want to just give a... a, a Someone know about OHA's uh, responsibility to our Lahui and what we want to do, you know, to address. I think you talked about the data and how overrepresented um, we are in some of these uh, poor economic statistics. You want to talk a little bit about how, like, just from your na'au. I think when you see people standing in line to get basic needs, hours waiting for food, they're standing in line because they don't cannot pay their bills. I think to me, it really just breaks my heart breaks my heart and I begin to think back about the resilience that our community is looking towards and our Hawaiian people. We need to be able to strive and go beyond some of these things that can pull us down. It's like that Alamihi crab syndrome, yeah? We need to just continue to work and push people up. Whether you use the common phrase as rise or aloha aina or malama aina, we all need to be looking at down the road, how are we going to improve the next generation? Because look at this pandemic, it took 90 days, less than three months to turn everything crashing down. And even now I'm, I'm, I'm blessed because I live in one rural community like Molokai on the east end. Hey, I can put in one garden. My husband can go fish, we have chickens, we got eggs, we go to my mother-in-law's house. All of these things matter for survival. And that's why we have to rely on our kupunas and our basic teachings. We make do, like today my husband made chicken and squash. The squash was on the roadside. Somebody would pick up food on the table. He picked up two squash and we cook them with the chicken. Oh, we had a big meal. Still get enough for tomorrow and breakfast. You know, so that would cost us nothing except for buy the five pound chicken at $6.99 for five pound thighs. We could split that up into two meals. That kind of stuff go a long way to make you feel like, oh, you are blessed and I am blessed. And our Hawaiian people, because we are the original people of this land. We are truly blessed. And that's the kind of legacy we want to leave everybody. We will get over this. Believe me, we will. And when we do, we're gonna come back kicking. And when we kick, we're gonna stand upright as we have been saying, ku e. Mahalo nui, Chair. Thank you very much. Advocacy is the backbone of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. In creating OHA, the delegates to the 1978 Constitutional Convention specifically recognized the dire situation of a once remarkable Native Hawaiian culture and envisioned that the agency would be established to provide a form of self-determination for Native Hawaiians and to address the needs of Native Hawaiians, including ongoing historical injustices. OHA's advocacy efforts include working with communities to share information and build public support for Hawaiian issues and to be involved in the process of developing and shaping our public policies that have broad implications for the Hawaiian community. In our advocacy segment, OHA's Public Relations Officer Sterling Wong gives us an update on the current advocacy initiatives that we are working on. When COVID-19 first started to become an issue, OHA sort of proactively decided to start looking at and anticipating how Native Hawaiians would be impacted. So our research division immediately started to dig into the data. When we started looking into the data, what we learned was that because Native Hawaiians are disproportionately represented in certain social economic indicators, that we were going to be probably more vulnerable to the impacts of COVID-19. 
the first things we did was uh, to start advocating for more renter eviction protections because we knew that Native Hawaiians sort of exist on the margins of the socioeconomic spectrum in the state. We participate in the workforce at larger rates than the rest of the state. We make less money per capita. We work in industries that are disproportionately more likely to be impacted by COVID-19. You know, we have less savings than other ethnic groups. We told the state, you really got to start considering protections for renters. Native Hawaiians, we're going to be impacted the hardest because we're going to lose our jobs. One of the big things about data is it helps us make informed decisions about how to use our limited resources, whether that be trust funds or our advocacy or staff resources, to best and most effectively meet the needs of our community. The Office of Hawaiian Affairs sent a letter last week asking the governor and three of his departments to provide better data on Native Hawaiians and the impacts the disease is having on Native Hawaiians. Uh, so we asked the Department of Human Services because they manage MedQuest, TANF, SNAP, and some of those financial programs. We asked the Department of Health, obviously, because they manage the actual data on the infectious disease uh, aspect of uh, the pandemic. And then we asked the Department of Labor and Industrial Relations because they manage unemployment. I think it's really important for the state of Hawaii to disaggregate and remove Native Hawaiians from the Pacific Islander category so we can really get a sense of the impacts of the disease is having on Native Hawaiians. We need good data from the state about how this disease is specifically impacting Native Hawaiians in the health and social and economic areas. That's, that is the real need. Kavai Ola, the living water of Oha, is the monthly newspaper of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Oha's digital and print media manager, Alice Silvanuz, shares with us the new digital version of the Kavai Ola and how we are getting the news out to the world. The Kavai Ola News is the latest evolution of the Kavai Ola Hawaiian community newspaper. Uh, and it takes all of the content that's available in the printed Kavaiola and makes it available online. And what's really cool about that is that all of the Hawaiian stories about the different people, community events that are happening within uh, Hawaii as well as the continent are now shareable on this online platform. Uh, and that's really powerful because now our stories are not just limited to here in Hawaii or our circulation here in Hawaii, but they're available online. You can, with a click of a button, you can share the stories that you care about or the news that you care about with uh, your friends on Facebook, Twitter. Um, you can also share on LinkedIn as well as email these stories. And that is a really powerful tool. Kavai Ola started back in the early 1980s when OHA was formed. And it started as a way for our OHA to stay in touch with our Native Hawaiian beneficiaries. But over time, it's really developed into a community paper where we're sharing Native Hawaiian features, community events, um, and news that's important to the Lahui. And so you have this treasure trove of Native Hawaiian perspectives on Native Hawaiian people, events, issues that are important to the Lahui. Um, and it's now available online, and therefore it's those perspectives, we're able to share them with the world. So we're really opening up the avenues of uh, the possibilities for people to understand about the things that are important to Native Hawaiians here in our homeland. We invite people to become subscribers to Kavai Ola, and it's really easy to do. You can go online to kavaiola.news and there's a subscribe button. And from there, you can select whether you would like to have a free subscription of either the electronic version um, or you can also get the printed version. But we really are encouraging people to get the electronic version because the online platform is a really rich resource. So in addition to getting the printed version of these stories, you'll also be able to get really powerful complimentary videos um, that are connected with some of the stories that we're sharing. And then you're also getting uh, expanded photo albums. You know, we, we go out to events, we might be able to shoot, you know, we might shoot like a thousand pictures at a single event. In the newspaper, we might share maybe a handful, two or three. Uh, but online, we're able to share a really 
a much broader perspective of the event and tell a more rich, full story with with the ability of going online. So we invite people to come online to kavaiola.news. In our Ho'ona'o Wau segment, we look at Kanayo Kana, Oa's community partner, whose mission is to perpetuate our Native Hawaiian culture through the development of a collective Native Hawaiian education system. One that is focused on Olelo Hawaii and a strong Ike Hawaii foundation that will nurture the next generation of Aloha Aina leaders. Also joining them is Hawaii Nuiya Kea, the School for Hawaiian Knowledge up at the University of Hawaii, who is the largest indigenous institution in the world. At the outset of the COVID-19 pandemic, Kanayo Kana and Hawaii Nuiya Kea created an engaging platform to service the masses who are now on stay-at-home orders. They turn to their vast network of educators, cultural practitioners, and community leaders to create five classes every week that explore the range of the Native Hawaiian worldview. Aloha mai kaua e malia pehe oi. Aloha no, he la nani ke ia, mahalo. Mahalo, mahalo, my kai for joining us today. I wanted to ask you, you know, tell us about this series that in collaboration, Kanayo Kana and Hawaii Nuiakea has produced this amazing um, program. Can you tell us a little bit about Lea Anuenue? Thank you. So, mahalo Nui for having us and Lea Anuenue is is a collaboration between Kanayo Kana, a Kula Hawaii network that brings together Hawaiian schools, Hawaiian organizations, and just like Hawaii Nui Akea, the School of Hawaiian Knowledge at UH Manoa. So through this collaboration, you know, in response to COVID-19 and what's happening, we felt right away that we needed to bring this kind of cultural programming that, that has a foundation of Ike Hawaii and Olelo Hawaii into the homes of all our ohana, whether they're here in Hawaii or beyond. You know, there was that kahea coming out and I got really excited and I wanted to just have all of my friends come into the hale, into the communities and so we just got started and, and put together Lei Anue Nui. You know, and it's done such a great job. You guys have topics that range from how to prepare he'e to um, how important Olelo Hawaii is, you know, in the homes um, to um, civic engagement activities like the census 2020. Such an awesome job. Can you tell us where our audience can find um, Lei Anue Nui? Le Anue Nue, you can find our most updated schedule on our website at kanayokana.net slash lay. So we keep it really easy. And we're, we go live on our Facebook page, whether it's Kanayokana as well as Hawaii Nui Akea. And because we have so many partners, just like the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, we, when we go live on um, Kanayokana's page, we go live on OHA's page and CNHA's page and all of our different partners because it really takes a lot of us to do this and to make it make it really a place where we can all come together and, and share. And I think that's our big intention is to share this EK with, with all of you. And you guys have done such a great job and we love um, sharing that EK out on all of our platforms and know that people can ask questions and engage um, with this program. So everybody out there, you know, go ahead, check out kanayokana.net slash lay. Mahalo Malia, mahalo for joining us. So don't go away because when we come back, we'll get a glimpse of what's on the horizon for our community outreach program. Try look this article in Kobay Olo. I saw that online already. Kobay Ola is online now at kobayola.news with bonus features like video, photo albums, and 40 years of stories on our La Hui. Wow. You never know. Get with the signs, boy.
Oho was born of the Hawaiian Renaissance and grassroots activism. To feed our community and support its needs. To advocate for our people and Aina. Today it's still about Aina. It's still about community. It's still about making Hawaii a better place for everyone. Oha, empowering Hawaiians, strengthening Hawaii. Heard you have a new process of voting this year. I don't vote, bro. It's so easy. All you gotta do is register by July 9th, get a ballot in the mail, fill them out, send them back. No lines, no post stations, just you and your kuleana. The only kuleana I have is become the next big MMA foe. You think that's kuleana? Kalima <laughs> McFarlane? Quote, it's our kuleana, our right and responsibility. Before you represent Hawaii in the cage, make sure you represent your people with your ballot. The Oha Community Engagement Paya is focused on amplifying the voices of the Lahui and fostering leadership opportunities in our communities. Oha's Community Outreach Manager, Davis Price, joins us as we look at the Aloha Rising Vote 2020 campaign, which will encourage Native Hawaiians to civically engage in the upcoming elections. Hawaii will be switching to an all-male voting process. And what that means is that we won't be voting in, the, in our precincts like we're used to. And we will all be getting ballots in the mail. Well, those who are registered to, to vote will be getting ballots in the mail. So it's very important that everyone register and it's much easier access for everyone. We don't have to leave the house and we're all getting used to that these days. So um, yeah, make sure we're registered to vote. And even if you know you're registered, it's very important that you check the voter registration website to make sure that your address is updated because that will be critical to receiving your ballot in the mail. They're going to send the ballots to whichever address is listed. So make sure your, your address information is updated so you can receive your ballot in the mail. And hopefully we get, you know, many more of us are now going to be able to vote with very easy access. OHA will be launching Aloha Rising Vote 2020 as its get out the vote effort this year. It's going to be aimed at uh, engaging young first-time Native Hawaiian voters and we'll be doing this through a series of cultural based workshops led by Kumu Hinale Moana Wong and a number of other grassroots efforts that will be hopefully get our young people excited to get out and vote and really because the process is so simple this year with mail-in voting um, we just really want to encourage folks to just pay attention and, and, and at the very least be engaged so that we can send a message from our community that our elected leaders will be held accountable. You know, in recent years, we've seen a lot of movement amongst our community. And a lot of this movement has been led by young people. And, you know, this election season is the time for young people, well, we hope that young people will take notice of the ability to start to connect the dots between the issues that they're passionate about and how to affect change on those issues. And voting is one of the ways to do that. So we hope that everyone will vote, and especially the young folks, if, if you're passionate about issues, this is the time to get out there. Make sure you're registered, make sure you know about the new mail-in uh, voting process, and you know, use your voice to hold your elected leaders accountable. In our Native Hawaiian Business Corner, we invite the CEO of the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, Kuhio Lewis, to share with us their innovative approach to keep Native Hawaiian-owned businesses operating during this pandemic. The Papa Makeke is a successful example of the saying, if you build it, they will come. By creating an online platform and a companion TV and multimedia show, the Pop-Up Makeke is home to over 100 vendors that would otherwise have little to no ability to sell their goods. So the Pop-Up Makeke really came uh, by way of the cancellation of Mary Monarch. You know, I think all of us were shocked by, by that. We saw it coming, but when it actually happened, first reaction is, oh my gosh. Second reaction is, how do we help? 
How do we fill the void? How do we fill the need? And so what came to mind for me was support for local businesses, vendors, because at Merry Monarch, you have an enriching festival. It's not just about hula, it's about our culture. It's about opportunity for our local people to make money. It's a chance for them to display their art, their goods, their hard work for the whole year. So the Papa Makeke really was birthed when events started getting canceling and our local vendors never had the opportunity or wouldn't have an opportunity to sell their mail, right? So we quickly pulled it together, uh, literally pulled it all together in less than two weeks, uh, partnered with a whole bunch of uh, friends of ours and up came the Papa Makeke. So the Papa Makeke is an online shopping place. It's a marketplace that houses over 100 vendors and over 2,000 items from your local vendors and crafters, artisans. And you can find just about anything there. You, you, don't, you, you find things you don't even want in there. But uh, you, it's hard to go there and not find something that's not for you, that's for your ohana. And you know, the show, it, it, we know everyone is feeling the pinch, so there needed to be the right tone. Chewy over here. Chewy, look over there. Say look, hi. Say hi. This is your debut. Yes, the debut. Okay. You know, right now in this economy, everyone is feeling the pinch, so we wanted to find the right tone. And so being able to support where you can became the theme behind it. And so this is about giving a hand up to our vendors, giving them a platform so that they can do the things that they do. And understanding that Merry Monarch for many is really the one time a year that they make all their money to feed their family. So this was an opportunity to allow them to continue to do that. So the store, as of today, April 30th, uh, the store has grossed nearly $200,000. Um, and that's money going right into the pockets of our vendors. We've sold over 5,500 items from the store. And there is weekly broadcasts that come online uh, as well as on TV so people can shop from home under this quarantine status that we're in. So it creates some synergy. Every week there's, uh, every other week there's new hosts. Uh, so it's attractive to Opio all the way to Kupuna. So there's a there's something in there for everybody. Mahalo for joining us for our very first episode of Ola Kahaloa. We hope that you have learned more about our community efforts here at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and ways that you can help sustain our Native Hawaiian community. These are challenging times and we urge you all to put more aloha out there and look after our ohana, our keiki, our kupuna. Please visit our website at oha.org to get more information on the programs, resources, and organizations that we discussed in this episode. And before we leave, we wanted to give a warm aloha to all the mothers out there. Tomorrow is Mother's Day, and especially during these times. Let us rejoice in our mothers, let us enjoy our families, and let us share a little bit more aloha out there for everyone. Mahalo nui loa and we will see you next week.